creativity, if you analyze what do, what do we mean when we say that, it, it basically means being able to transcend the ordinary. You see it in a way nobody else ever saw it, whatever it is, and so that's creativity. Uh, psychedelics, by dissolving the boundaries of cultural expectation, uh, let you see things in new ways. I was in a situation recently where it was evening and uh, silhouetted against the sky were flame cypress trees, but they were all black. And I was looking at them. I've seen flame cypress trees against twilight skies many times. You all have as well. And suddenly it was like there was this shift and I didn't see it as a flame cypress tree anymore. I saw it as black dust pouring out of a certain point of the sky and cascading like a waterfall. And I was looking at three waterfalls of microfine black powder pouring out of points about 60 feet above the ground. Well, I, was, I didn't even mention it to the person I was with, but I, I just <laughs> noticed this psychedelic uh, perception. Uh, the other night, this was really interesting to me, the other night, just as I was falling asleep, a phrase came into my mind that I, I liked, but I didn't understand it. In fact, I didn't think it meant anything. I just thought it was an interesting phrase. And, and I thought about it for about a minute, and then it did this same thing that the flame cypress tree did. It went ploink, and this other dimension sprouted out of it. And I understood it, and I thought, this is a very interesting idea. And I've never thought it before. The thought was, uh, if time were space, then history is a cobweb. That was all it was. But I don't take these leaps very often. So I was delighted uh, because I knew a moment would come when I could lay it on a group of people like I've just done. <laughs> so uh, it's a catalyst for cognitive activity. That's what the mushroom is. Dance, drama, song, painting, body expression, creativity, and simply the passive act of understanding. It, this is what it does for us, and this is what we love to do. I mean, we are creatures of the mind. You know, they talk about virtual reality as some future technology that's going to change everything. We've been living in a virtual reality for the past 6,000 years. I mean, look at cities like New York and London and Los Angeles. I mean, the, every nature has disappeared. Everything you see is a human idea downloaded into material existence. It's entirely virtual. It doesn't disappear at the punch of a dial, but it is as virtual as the virtual realities that will eventually be made out of, uh, out of light behind goggles. Culture, uh, the whole thing is that culture and language tend to become traps, and yet they can be the platforms for enormous freedom if you understand what it's all about. And what it's all about is you. You are the center of the mandala. You are not marginalized in any way. And the message that the culture gives us is that we are marginal. It doesn't matter whether you, if you've got a hundred million dollars, Fortune magazine will inform you that so do 10,000 other people on the North American continent. There's nothing special about you. It's, and so we are constantly, this is part of the democratic legacy. We are constantly told you're not special. Special isn't special. Anybody could do it. What the psychedelic, and so then when you look for guidance, direction, mentorship, we always look toward institutions. Well, I'll go to the university, or I'll go to the army, or I'll do something. Somebody will tell me, will give me a larger purpose. But it's really yourself. 
that is uh, the final arbiter. And if you keep yourself as the final arbiter, you will be less susceptible to infection by cultural illusion. Now, the problem with this is that it makes you feel bad to not be infected by cultural illusion because it's called alienation, you know? But this is, I, I can't solve all problems. The reason we feel alienated is because the society is infantile, trivial, and stupid. So uh, the cost of sanity in this society is a certain level of alienation. I grapple with this because I'm a parent. And I think anybody who has children, you come to this realization, you know, what'll it be? Alienated, cynical intellectual, or slack-jawed, half-wit consumer of the horseshit being handed down from on high? There is not much choice in there you see and and we all want our children to be well adjusted it's unfortunately there's nothing to be well adjusted to so uh, that's a real problem